Hi friends, I'm here with a yoga offering. As always, please go at your own pace, rest whenever you need to, modify, skip, or change anything that's not working for you today. Let's start on our backs. We can come into a Shavasana type position. Go ahead and spread out. Close your eyes. Let the weight of your body release back into the floor. Come into a nice slow rhythm with your breath. you're welcome to keep your eyes closed or open them as it's useful for you throughout your practice. Let's begin by sliding arms overhead, stretching out really long through your arms and legs. And then interlace your fingers and press out through your palms. Flex your feet, reaching through the heels of your hands, the heels of your feet. And then release. Bring your right knee in. Give that knee a good squeeze. You might even give a little jiggle or shake to your knee, releasing deep into the hip crease. And then straighten your right leg up towards the ceiling, holding somewhere behind your leg for a gentle hamstring stretch. Flex and point your foot a few times. Call your ankle a couple times one way, a couple times the other way. Bend your knee back in, open your knee out to the right, and then straighten part way or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of the left leg. Bend your knee, bring it across, spinal twist. Open out through your right arm, let your knee and shoulder release away from one another. And then staying in your twist, try straightening your right leg on a low diagonal. Right arm on a high diagonal, reaching the ends away from one another. And then release, roll back onto your back. Bring both knees in. Take a little circle or rock with your knees. And then grab hold of just the left knee. Drop the right leg long, squeeze that knee in. And then straighten the left leg up. Flex and point your foot a few times. Circle your ankle a couple times one way, a couple times the other way. And then bend your knee back in, open your knee out to the left, and straighten part way or all the way out to the side, grounding down through the back of the right leg. And 
then bend your knee, bring it across. Spinal twist, first with a bent knee. And then straighten the left leg on a low diagonal, left arm on a high diagonal, reaching the end points away from one another. And then roll back onto your back, bring both knees in. Take a little circle or rock, feeling what's touching the floor, a little massage for the lower back, evening out your torso. And then make your way up to sitting. Let's come into a comfortable cross-leg position. If you wanna sit up on something, you might grab a blanket or cushion. <sighs> Sitting nice and tall, feeling the length of your spine here. Bring the right arm up, bend it straight back on itself, grab your elbow and take it back. As you do this, drop the ribs, draw the belly in. You might move around a little Each new shape is another opportunity to be in your body, experiencing what's here now. Let's release right arm up, open it out, take it across, hook with the other arm, hug it in as close as you can. And as you do this, draw back through your right shoulder. So you're square across the chest, sitting tall. And then release, arm out. Rotate your thumb to point down, wrap it around behind your back, back of the hand at the waist, interlace fingers at the waist, pull your knuckles around towards the front and then elbows go towards one another. From here, circle the left shoulder a couple times. Keeping fingers interlaced, reach both arms back, Open up the chest and then fold forward. And this could be just dropping the head or coming part way or all the way towards the floor. Let's release, come up, hands to knees, round back, lean away from your hands on your knees, drop your chin. Roll your way back up. Let's recross the leg so the other leg is in front or on top. Take the left arm up, bend it straight back on itself, grab your elbow and take it back. As you do that, drop the ribs, explore. Keep tuning into subtlety, feeling your breath, being curious what else you're noticing here. And then release left arm up, open it out, take it across, hook with the other arm, hug it in close. As you do this, draw back through the left shoulder. Release arm out, thumb points down, wrap it around. This time when you go to interlace your fingers, try the other thumb on top. Elbows go towards one another and then circle your left shoulder. And reach both arms back, open up the chest. And then fold forward whatever amount you are able. You don't need to be able to fold more than you can fold. So you're just exploring what your limits are. Breathing here right at your edge. And release. 
release. Come up, hands to knees, round back. Lean away from your hands on your knees, drop your chin. And then roll your way back up. <clears throat> Let's bring the feet to the floor, hip width apart. You can shift your hands to the floor in front of your feet and take a little rock front to back as you rock your weight forward, looking for a stretch through your toes as you rock back, getting into calves, ankles, Achilles tendon. Anytime you need to slow things down so that you can more fully feel what you're doing. Each shift, each moment, this new sensation, new experience. Let's drop the heels, lift the hips, and come back to hang and ragdoll. You can bend your knees a little or a lot. You can take any arm position, including using support through your arms. You might rest elbows on thighs. You can take any movement here, maybe a little sway or shake out. Can you really let the weight of your head fall? <sighs> Let's plant the hands near the front of the mat and step back into a high push-up position. Bring your whole body into a straight long line, engaging the core, feeling the whole underside lifting, supporting you, thighs lifting, belly lifting, chest lifting. Keep that lift as you shift your weight forward to lower down. Elbows hug the sides of the body. And then come into your back bend. So this could be low or high. Cobra or up dog. In this first one, you may want to take a little more gently or explore a little. How is this today? Wherever you are, shoulders down. Nice long neck. And then back to down dog when you're ready. Hips high. Take your time coming into this first down dog of class. You may want to pedal out the feet a little bit. Could shift your hips side to side. And then drop your knees. Sink back to child's pose, releasing hips to the heels. Forehead to the floor. With arms out in front of you, walk your hands over to the left. And then pull back through right hip, stretching right side a little more. Come through center and over to the other side. Pull back through your left hip, stretching left side a bit more. And then back to center. Let's lift up through table. Come back to down dog. And we'll take the right leg up to the ceiling. Bring your knee to your chest and start circling this bent right knee, making the biggest circle possible for your hip joint. You could also do this from hands and knees if that would work better for you. And I 
next time your leg is up, reach it straight. Send it a little higher and then a big step forward. Let's take a low lunge. So we're gonna drop the back knee. If you wanna pat it, you could roll up the side of your mat or if you have a blanket or cushion and wanna use that, you could. Sink the hips forward. As you do this, check the angle of that front knee. If you didn't step your foot far enough forward, it's gonna be really tight angles on the ankle and knee, in which case just put a little more space between your front leg and your back leg. If you have blocks and wanna use them, that can help reach the floor a little more easily. And you can either stay here with hands on the floor or blocks, or bring your forearms to your knee, your hands to your knee or thigh, hands to your hips or arms up. Feel the front of the left hip opening by dropping the tail, lifting the heart, whether your arms are up or down. Last breath here. Release. Hands to the floor or to your blocks. Let's take the hips back for a hamstring stretch with a top of the ankle stretch. So we're gonna have the hands right under shoulders. Again, as high as you need them. So you might come up on blocks. If you don't have blocks, you can use other things around your house or your shin. We're going towards hip square. Draw the right hip back towards a flat back. So it's okay if your back is rounded, just go in the direction of flat and then you meet your edge. Towards that right foot flat, it may not get all the way to the floor, just go in that direction towards a straight front leg, but making sure you're not overstretching. A little bend could be useful. And towards folding. As you go towards all those things, you'll meet your edge and it may look very different than what I'm doing. It's not about what it looks like. Let's shift weight forward. We're gonna take a high lunge now. Tuck the back toes, lift the back legs straight. Make sure the front knee is right above the ankle and then set up for a twist. So you can either keep your left hand on the floor or a block and then lift the right arm high. Go towards a nice straight line from one arm to the other. Pull up through that top hand. See if you can feel the head and the back heel connected so the whole body is in a straight long line. Long torso, long straight back leg. Last breath here. Release. Hands to the floor. Let's step back either directly to down dog or come through high push up, low push up, cobra or up dog, and then back to down dog. So each transition, you move in the way that feels right for you. Take the time you need. Slow down your breath here. From down dog, when you're ready, left leg sweeps up. Bend your knee in and start circling. Time the leg is up, reach it straight, and then a big step forward, a low lunge. If your foot doesn't make it far enough forward, you can pick it up and bring it there or shimmy it further forward. You can pad the back knee, you can grab blocks for your hands, sink the hips forward, start to look for a stretch on the front of the right hip. And if you did so on the other side, you might take the upper body further up, elbows to knee, hands to the knee or hips or arms all the way up. Okay. 
Last breath here. Release, hands to the floor or to the blocks. Take the hips back, hamstring stretch with a top of the ankle stretch. Hands right under shoulders, hips above the back knee, going in the directions you know to go in. release. Shift your weight forward. Tuck the back toes, lift the back leg straight, high lunge, setting up for a twist. Right hand on the floor or a block, left arm high, reach up through that top hand, connect your head to your back heel, feel the whole body in a long straight line. Last breath here. Release, make your way back to down dog. And then settle into a good rest that could be down dog, but it could just as well be child's pose or sitting or something else. Last breath here. Let's come all the way through to sitting. We'll extend the legs forward. Take the flesh of the sit bones back. Inch the heels forward, sitting tall. Start to fold and it may be that it's just a idea of folding and there's nowhere to go. So that's where there is to be, wherever you end up. Hands can support you on the floor, or if you're able to reach the feet, you might grab the feet or put a strap around the feet. I'm going in the direction of length, in the direction of folding. If you avoid what's tight, there's a very good chance it will get tighter. So we want to keep exploring what are the limits, gently going towards those places that are tight, weak, and balanced. And if we do go towards what's tight, there's a good chance it will become less tight, but those results are not guaranteed and they are subtle and slow and sometimes there's other factors at play like aging and injuries and whatnot. But as we go towards what's tight, we may find more freedom by things changing, like getting less tight, but we can also find freedom by acclimating to the feeling of being with the tightness, feeling exactly how it is right now, and surrendering. How do you do that? Let's release, come up. We'll bring the soles of the feet together. 
Baddha Konasana. Grab your toes or ankles with that grip, lengthen. And then fold whatever amount you're meeting your edge where it is. If your elbows meet your legs, you could push into them, help them open a bit more. If it works better for you to lean into your hands or elbows or a block, find how this works best for you using all your knowledge about your body, about this shape. Is there any unnecessary effort? Is there any gripping or resistance you might release here now? release, bring the upper body back up. So let's get set up for a supported fish. You'll need some props for this, but there are many things you might use. If you have a couple yoga blocks, that could be good. A rolled up blanket, a rolled up yoga mat, foam roller, a couple books with a towel over it. Um, you might just look around your space, see what you've got handy. And something is going to go behind the upper back, pretty high up the upper back, just low enough that the tops of the shoulders can fall off. But we don't want it anywhere near the lower back where there's already a nice arch. Now, depending what you've chosen, you may want something else to support your head so that instead of the chin being way up in the air, the chin is dropped and the back of the neck is long. Arms can be overhead or out to the side. Legs can be bent or straight. As you're first settling in, notice how it feels. If it's too much, if you're having trouble relaxing your face and breathing deeply, you might want to take it down a notch. Depending on your body, you may need to make this very subtle. For some bodies, even just lying flat is almost a, a stretch in itself. So you could have like a one inch roll of a blanket behind the upper back and that could be plenty. So find your challenge level of being honest with yourself. A good way to check is can I relax here? If the answer is no, it might just be a little too much. And while we do want to keep going towards what's tight, that is a long-term, very slow and gentle process. If we aggressively go towards what's tight, the body's gonna have a stress response. It's gonna try and protect itself by engaging and, and gripping. So if you are having a stress response, your shoulders are lifting, your face is grimacing, and you cannot relax, come out of the pose. It's not right right now. And then over time, we can increase the situations, poses that we might relax into, surrender into. And this is, you know, a great practice for both on and off the mat. Next time you're in traffic, see if you can relax your jaw. I hate being late. When I'm late, I get really tense. So that's a good practice for me when I'm late. Can I relax my face? Can I breathe deeply? This is a pose you can hang out in for quite a while. You don't need to be warmed up to do it. If you only have a few moments, could be a great counter stretch to sitting at your desk for a long time. If 
you're ready to release out of this, you can interlace your fingers behind your head. Use your hands, your arms to lift your chin to your chest, taking the pressure off. And then lean to one elbow to move your things out of your way. Roll back down and just take a moment feeling the effect of where you just were. <sighs> Notice the feeling in your upper back, your rib cage. And then let's take a supported bridge. So now we're going to bring those blocks or props, whatever you've got handy, under the lower uh, sacrum, a little lower than the lower back, top of the buttocks, really. And again, this could be high or low, hard or soft. Could be just a rolled up blanket, cushion. Something firm is generally good, but you can play around. Yoga blocks are great. Now might be the time to uh, buy some. <laughs> Once you have your hips in place, release them down, rest. This is a very gentle inversion. The hips are higher than the heart. And we'll add a hip stretch here. You can also just stay right where you are if you like. If you want to join me in a hip stretch, bring your right knee to your chest. Grab hold of it, hug it in close, and then straighten the left leg and let the front of that left leg hang, yawning open. The more you hug the right knee in, the more you let that left leg hang, the more of an opening there can be on the front of the left hip. Let's switch sides, bring the left knee in, grab hold of it, straighten the right leg, let that straight right leg hang, yawning open. When you feel even on the two sides, come to neutral. Could be both feet back to the floor, both knees to the chest, or both legs straight, either up in the air or along the floor. Mm. Relaxing as much as you can right where you are right now. When you are ready, you can release. Bringing feet to the floor, taking blocks out of your way or props out of your way. Coming down. And just check in with your body. Is anything else needed before coming into your final resting pose? Do you want to finish with a twist? Any last stretch? Any adjustment to your clothing or props? You could use a little self-massage, helping you relax a little more fully. Eventually settle into stillness, letting go. You can let go of the control of your breath, let go of ah, trying to do anything.
slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and toes, gently waking your body up again. Let this movement increase gradually through your wrists and ankles, eventually stretching out long through your arms and legs. <sighs> Bring your knees in. Roll to one side. And then use your hands to help you up to sitting. And bring hands together at the heart. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for taking such good care of yourself. I hope you have a good rest of your day.